With everyone playing D&D online these days, wouldn't it be awesome if you could still use physical dice and everyone could see what you roll? Now you can. Natural 20, hell yeah! It's great that we have this hobby that adapts so well to online play, but something felt missing to me with the dice. You get somebody who gets a natural 20, and they jump up and they go, woohoo, natural 20, and everyone's just kind of watching and it falls a little flat. So I had this idea to take a dice tray and attach a webcam to it, and then somehow combine that with my normal webcam into a picture-in-picture -picture view so that in my calls you could see my dice tray and you could see all my dice rolls. It actually turned out to be easier to make than I expected. The total cost of parts is about $30 here, and the software is all free. And it works great. I've used it with Zoom, Google Meet. The software basically just presents as an additional webcam that you can select in any software you're going to use. So I thought maybe some folks would like to see how to build one, so let's get to it. For this project, you're going to need a small unfinished wood box, some quarter-inch thick rubber bands, a cheap webcam, a wooden ruler, and a square piece of felt. You will also need a pair of scissors, a very small Phillips head screwdriver, and some white glue. All right, let's start building. We're gonna start with our wooden box. You can get these at any craft store, or you can order them on Amazon if you can't get to a craft store. I recommend going to a craft store if you can. That way you can see the box and actually get a feel for how big it is and what the shape of it is. If you have to order them online, you might pay a little bit more. The one I'm linking to below is actually a set of three, which is what I have right here. They came kind of nested in each other like this. The, the actual box that I want to use is the smallest one. This box is three by five, which is just the right size to fit a handful of dice. And you really want to use as small a box as you can get away with. That way the dice look nice and big when they're on camera and don't go rolling away off camera if you're zoomed in. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we just want the tray. We just want the bottom half of the box. So what we're going to do is remove all the hardware and the lid. So grab your screwdriver and we'll start by taking off the screws that hold the lid to the bottom. Um, I'm removing the bottom set of screws here uh, because I don't need the lid at all, so why bother unscrewing the hinges from the lid? And interestingly, it looks like the manufacturer of this particular box missed a screw, so that's interesting. Okay, there we go. Now we have our just our, our, our little box, uh, which is going to be our tray for our dice. Oh, it's still got the clasp there on the front. Let's remove that as well. Now we have our tray. Uh, you can decorate this in any way you want, paint it, finish it. Personally, I like to felt line it. So I'm gonna grab our piece of felt. Uh, now, if you went to the craft store, you'll probably find these nice uh, squares of felt, nine inches by 12 inches, which you can get for like less than a dollar. This part is totally optional, by the way. It works fine, completely plain. There's no need to put the felt in. I just like the way it looks and feels. <laughs> So, since we need a ruler anyway for later, uh, conveniently, we'll use that to measure the interior of, of our box. And then we will cut a square of felt that will fit perfectly into the bottom of the box. You can just place the square of felt in there and it'll just sit just fine. Or if you want, you can spread a little white glue around, kind of spread it out, rub around with your finger to get all the corners, and then press the felt into that and that'll hold the felt in place. Okay, once our tray is prepared, the next step is to attach the arm that's going to hold our camera. And for that, we're going to use a wooden ruler. So well, we have to just attach it to the outside like this. And we're going to do that at first with rubber bands. So we're going to take our rubber bands and we're going to wrap as many of them as we can around the box. Uh, and you want to keep them nice and flat with no twists in them. And like I said, wrap as many as you can around the box. I think we're going to get maybe three or four around this particular box. Um, this is not going to create the most stable, sturdy connection, but um, it'll allow us to kind of shift the arm around and find the right position for it. And we can glue it in place later if we want. Um, maybe the rubber bands hold it just fine, and you could argue that 
It gives you a little more flexibility to reposition later or switch to a different size tray and or pack it down and so that you can put it away. So it's really up to you if you're happy with the rubber band fixture or if you want to glue. All right, so there you go. I've got four rubber bands wrapped around the outside edge of this box. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna slide it under the rubber bands like so and kind of line up the bottom edge with the bottom edge of the box and just setting it on the table is gonna square it nicely. So there you go. There's my arm attached to my box and seems to be holding in place pretty well. Okay, now we're going to attach the camera to the arm. So the camera is the most expensive part of this project, but you can still get them pretty cheaply. This one I bought on Amazon for $18. You don't really need a high-end camera for this. Maybe you recently upgraded your regular camera that you use for all the online meetings and whatnot you're doing these days. So uh, maybe you have an older camera lying around and you can just use that. I like this one because uh, specifically it has manual focus. So you might want to search for that. Manual focus is actually kind of a pain and pro probably makes the camera cheaper if you're using it as a real webcam, but we're not. We're fixing it to a specific position and it's gonna be focused on just dice. So being able to manually adjust the focus and let it stay at that spot is actually better than having some autofocus software that's going to regularly blur your camera. So we have to attach it to our arm and we're gonna do that, surprise, surprise, with another rubber band. This camera has such a big, hefty clip, plastic clip to it. I'm going to start with it. So I'm just gonna wrap the rubber band around it twice and then I'm going to put it on to the ruler, like so. There you go. Now from here, we can adjust the camera position. The rubber band allows us to slide it up and down the ruler. Uh, the camera itself, of course, has various tilt and, and, and rotations that we can adjust. Uh, we'll get to that, though, when we hook it up to the software and look at what the picture actually looks like. So for the software, what we're gonna use is something called OBS. Uh, this is software that is used by a lot of streamers to stream to places like Twitch or YouTube, um, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, we're, we're actually going to install an additional plugin here called the OBS Virtual Cam. Uh, there's a Windows version and there is also a separate OS X version. All right, so here we have OBS up and running. Um, so we're gonna add some sources. Uh, first, we're going to add a uh, video capture source, and we'll call this the main camera. And we'll just set our normal webcam that you would expect to use for calling here. Uh, there we go. Hi, everyone. Okay. Now we're going to um, also add a secondary video capture device. There we go. And we'll call this the dice cam. And we'll set that to our second camera there it is great now that we can see the dice uh, we want to adjust the focus and the angle so i'll start by turning the focus knob and interestingly this camera the parts are so bad as i turn the focus knob you can see the whole picture kind of got skewed here uh, so what i did actually is then i turned it a little bit more and then turned it back and that kind of straightened the picture out a little bit just trying to get the the box square with the frame of the image and then we can shift the camera itself around via the rubber bands and the angles to try and get it as centered as possible. Okay, so you can see we can drag it around, position it where we want, we can grab the corner and resize it. And if we hold down the Alt key and drag one of these little boxes on the edge, we can crop. So we want to do that. We want to crop in, get rid of the, don't want to see any of the box, just want to see the dice. Great, and let's stick that in the corner. Oops. There you go. You might want to come over here and lock the main camera so you don't do what I just did. Don't drag that around. Maybe get that to the size that we like. Uh, when you hook this into your calling software like Zoom or Google Meet or whatnot, it's going to flip horizontally the image like you're looking into a mirror. Um, you don't see this in OBS. So as I'm looking at OBS, if I raise my left hand, it's on the opposite side rather than straight across like I'm looking in a mirror, which looks a little weird if you're used to um, calling video calling software. Now the downside to that is that if we mirror it, then when we look at our numbers, the numbers on the dice are gonna be backwards. If we can correct that here uh, by right clicking on our window and selecting transform, 
and flip horizontal. There you go. Now it's flipped here in OBS, so by the time it gets flipped again in our calling software, it'll look correct. Okay, the last step here is now that this all looks nice is to go into the tools menu and select virtual cam. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. We just, great, looks fine. Hit start button and we're good to go. We can close this window. Uh, we can now minimize OBS. We don't really care about OBS. It's running, it's doing its thing. Um, and we can go over to our call software, like say Zoom. All right, so here I've loaded Zoom and then possibly if Zoom was previously set to use the same webcam that you're now using in OBS, it might not work and you might get some interesting little pop-ups about errors about how we can't use that webcam. That's fine, we don't want that webcam. What we wanna do is go into our settings here and select OBS camera and start video. And here I am. And as you can see, my dice look correct. They're on the opposite side of where I put them because um, you know, because uh, I, because like we said, uh, Zoom is mirroring my video. So I could, if I wanted to, I could pop back over here into OBS and we can just drag this over onto this side and then minimize it. And there you go. Now it's on apparently my left and I can grab my dice and give them a roll. Look at that. Works great. Let's see if we can get away with a full on 8D6 fireball. I think it should fit. Not bad, not bad. Uh, I mean, not the best roll in the world, but uh, all the dice certainly fit in the camera. Now that you know it works, you may want to glue the ruler to the outside of the box. This will make the arm more sturdy and less likely to shift around if you accidentally bump into it. If the rubber bands are working for you, you may want to stick to that as it's easier to take apart and put away. But if you want a sturdier arm, rub some white glue on the ruler, then press and hold it against the box. This is why we use a wooden ruler, because wood will absorb the glue and hold better. Then just give it a moment and tip it over and square it against the table and leave it out to dry. So that's how to build your own dice cam for playing D&D online. I hope you enjoyed the project. If you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments below, or tell me how your own build went. And if you enjoyed this project, please do like the video and subscribe to the Wandering DMs channel. We have a lot of great D&D content here on Wandering DMs, including actual plays of D&D and Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, our upcoming competitive 5th edition D&D tournament show, The Big Bad, and our regular Sunday afternoon talk show that's featured such guests as Ernie Gygax, Joe Manganello, and R.A. Salvatore, just to name a few. We're live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then.